Hello, everyone. My name is Lisa Karasek. I am the moderator for Brave Storytime, and we are here today with Jan Pratt. Jan is going to be reading her chapter from the Brave Kids book, Stories to Inspire Future World Changers. And um, Jan, do you want to tell us a little bit about your, um, well, the title of your chapter is Amalia. Did I say that right? You got Amalia. it. You got it. Amalia tames a bully. So tell us a little bit about Amalia. So Amalia is one of, uh, of a character that I came up with when I was hiking in Germany. And that's kind of where that name comes from. It's more of a, a European um, commonality rather than here in the United States. But I love that name. And she popped into my head doing a hike and she has three books and then this short story. And she is a very much a go-getter out to change the world. Perfect for brave kids. Exactly. <laughs> Perfect for brave healer productions. I love that. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, Dan, tell us a little bit about how you came to be in this book. Um so I have my first two books were with a different publisher and I was looking for a new publisher for this third book and that's how I met um, Laura was in that process of trying to find out wh what was a good match for this character and the books that I was doing and um, this book popped up because Kelly the um, main author had who is also a children's book author was trying to get this project off the ground. And it was just serendipitous. We just connected through Laura and um, I was excited to bring this character into a new light in a short story format, so. Nice, thank you. Sorry, I muted myself because of my call. Um, why did you want to write this chapter? I think you just answered it a little though. So it's coming from an, another a series. It's is this part of a series? Is this how did you separate this out? Um, you know, I think she can tackle a lot of different problems. I don't know that this subject matter of a bully would lend itself to a whole book. But I think it's a really important topic that kids deal with all of the time. So the, the philosophy behind the Brave Kids books is that there are a compilation of short stories that would be discussion starters. So you might read this with your kid or to your kiddo and then ask a lot of questions like, Wow, how did she handle this problem? Have you do you know anybody in, you know, are, are any of your friends struggling with this problem? Do you, you have this problem? What could you do to solve a problem like this? So they're all meant to be discussion starters. So I think this particular topic just lended itself well to a short story. Definitely. That's that's amazing. I love that project. Um how did it feel for you to write your chapter? You know, they flow pretty easily. I have been a public librarian and worked in public schools for over 20 years. And so I, a lot of the topics that um, Amalia handles or deals with just is from my experience with kids. My first, very first job at 14 was working with kids. I was teaching gymnastics to little two-year-olds. So um, it seems like, you know, there's just a lot of kiddos in my life and um, they struggle a lot these days. There's a lot of issues that kids have to deal with. And so any way that we can help support them, I think is a good thing. Definitely, that's beautiful. Thank you for all the work you've done. Thanks. Are you ready to read your chapter? I'm excited to read my chapter. <laughs> Excellent. Go ahead. Well, I'm going to show you the illustration first. I don't know if you can see that very good, but Kelly did such a 
good job of not only coordinating this book, but doing an illustration for each chapter. So I thought um, the little bees were so cute. So chapter 10, Amalia tames a bully. Kindness can change a hard heart. Amalia loved everything about school. She loved science, geography, and reading. She loved her teacher, Mr. Bowles, who made silly jokes and came up with fun projects. Best of all, she got to see her two best friends every day. Jackson and Isla May had been by her side since they started school together in kindergarten, and now they were in third grade. They met at recess every day to play. They ate lunch together. They even walked home from school together. But all this changed when Bobby Johnson moved to town right after Christmas break. Bobby was as loud as a blowhorn, as big as a high school football player, and even used bad words whenever he was far from the teacher's hearing. When he moved around the classroom, he bumped into desks on purpose just to make things fall on the floor. Take that, you loser, he sneered. Then laughed, pip squeaks belong in the back as he shoved his way to the front of the line. If he wanted a pencil or a piece of paper, he just took it from the desk next to him. And if anyone complained about it, he'd catch them in the hall, ball up his fists and say, just remember who's the boss around here, while he smacked his fist into the palm of his other hand. Amalia, Jackson, and Isla May were the welcoming committee in their class, and they tried hard to help Bobby fit in. They showed him around the school and even tried to invite Bobby to play with them on the playground, but soon they became, became his favorite targets. Bobby called them little babies at recess. He shoved them in the hallway. He even waited for them after school. One day, he took Jackson's backpack and threw it in the dumpster. Another day, he grabbed Isla May's favorite scarf and ran away with it. Finally, Amalia had had enough. First, she talked with her mom and dad. She knew she could count on them in tough situations. That night at dinner, she brought up the subject of Bobby. Mom, Dad, I have a problem at school that I need to solve. I just can't seem to find a solution by myself and wanted to see what you think. She told them all about the new kid in class as tears rolled down her cheeks. I just can't let Bobby hurt my friends and we're all afraid to walk in the hallways. School isn't fun anymore and that has to change. She wiped the tear from her cheek and slammed her fist on the table. What do we already know about Bobby, Mom asked. Hmm, well, he came from another school. He's bigger than everyone else, that's for sure. He seems mad a lot, and he doesn't seem to have any friends yet, but that's because he's so mean to everyone, gushes Amalia. Well, I think we need to talk to some folks at school. Let's get together with your teacher and the principal and see if we can brainstorm solutions, said Dad. Well, I think Jackson and Isla May should come too. They always have great ideas, said Amalia. Mom makes some phone calls and a meeting is set for after school the next day. When everyone meets in Mrs. Peavy's office, she calls the meeting to order. Amalia, Jackson, and Isla May, First, I want to say I'm sorry this has happened, and I'm sure we can find some way to turn the situation around. Happy Days Elementary School is meant to be a safe place for all students, and you've come to the right place. Mr. Bowles starts. Bobby has definitely changed the feeling in our classroom. I've had several talks with him, but he doesn't want to listen and usually ends up storming off. I'm ready to find a way to make this better. What do, you do, what do you kids think could help? Everyone throws out some ideas for the next 30 minutes and before you know it, a plan is hatched. The next day, Mrs. Peavy shows up at the classroom door and asks to see Bobby for a minute. 
Bobby, can you come with me, please? I have a special job I need some help with. Bobby shoves his chair back with a loud bang on the desk behind him, shuffles to the classroom door, muttering under his breath, and shoves the door so hard it hits the outside wall. Everyone in the classroom holds their breath until Mrs. Peavy says, Thanks, Bobby. I can't wait to tell you about this new project. All right, everyone, Mr. Bowles calls. Join me by the board. We don't have much time. Amalia quickly lays out the plan. We're going to kill him with kindness, she explains. Bobby has been to a lot of schools, but none like our school. Every time he does something scary, we'll compliment him or invite him to join a game. I bet he'll be so surprised that maybe he'll start to change his tune. Mr. Bowles gives a list of suggestions of what they can say to Bobby in some different situations and then quickly sends everyone back to their seats. In the meantime, Mrs. Peavy showed Bobby around the hallway and pointed out the problem she needed help with. Bobby, I wanted to get your opinion on handling a problem I've been stumped on. Do you see this graffiti in the hallway? I know this isn't true, but I can't seem to figure out how to get to, to stop. Mr. Thompson scrubs it off, but someone just keeps adding more in other places around the school. What did they do in your other schools? Was this a problem there too, she asked. What's the big deal, snorts Bobby. Of course no one cares, especially the stupid kids. Maybe we should draw on all the walls. The school would look a lot better in my opinion. Hey, Bobby, I just knew you'd come up with a good idea with all the experience you've had. Of course, we need to add some artwork in the halls. That would really liven things up. I'm going to put you in charge of this project. Can you come up with some designs? Something that might really inspire the kids here? Mrs. Peavy says as she raises her eyebrows and crosses her arms while nodding her head as she looks at the wall in front of her. Bobby can't believe what he just heard. Me? In charge of a project? Who's going to believe that? As he mulls this over, his shoulders drop just a little, and his face has just a hint of a smile. Over the next two weeks, the kids of Mr. Bowles' class kill Bobby with kindness. Hey, Bobby, can you show me how to kick that ball so well? I really got to learn how to do that, Jackson asks. Hey, Bobby, can you help me move these desks for group time? Asks Mr. Bowles. You're the strongest in the class. With each new compliment, the class notices that Bobby softens towards the class just a bit. Twice a week, Mrs. Peavy comes to get Bobby to check on his progress on the hallway mural. Each meeting goes a bit smoother and a little less gruff until Mrs. Peavy is ready to have Bobby share his ideas they've been working on with the class. As they enter the classroom after the, their last chat, Mrs. Peavy asks, Mr. Bowles, might Bobby and I have a minute of your class time to share some ideas we've been working on? Mr. Bowles signals for everyone to join Mrs. Peavy and Bobby up by the board as he nods to Mrs. Peavy. Mrs. Peavy pats Bobby's shoulder and motions for him to stand in front of his classmates. Bobby and I have noticed a problem in the halls of our school and we've been brainstorming an idea to solve it. We want to see what you think and if you can help us out. Bobby, go ahead and lay out your plan. The whole time Mrs. Bobby is, Mrs. Peavy is speaking, Bobby's head is down, staring at the floor. He has his arms crossed over his chest and his foot is nervously tapping up and down. Slowly, he looks up at the kids sitting in front of him and lets out a loud whoosh of breath. Well, you see, he stammers, someone's been drawn on the walls at school and it doesn't look very good. Mrs. Peavy and I thought we could do some art in the halls and that would look a whole lot better than those scribbles. 
and maybe whoever is doing that graffiti will get the hint that we want to take care of this building. He looks around at the kids and notices lots of smiles and heads nodding in agreement. Amalia raises her hand. Mr. Bowles nods to her to speak. Bobby, that's the best idea I've heard in a long time. Something nice in the hallways would make our school look a lot better. What a great idea. The class claps and cheers. Bobby's face lights up with a big smile as Mrs. Peavy and Mr. Bowles join in with the applause. Before you know it, the mural is up in the hallway and all of Mr. Bowles' class stands back to admire the hard work. Bobby raises his hand and Mr. Bowles motions for him to come forward. With a, bit, with a bit more confidence, Bobby faces the class, smiles, and says, thanks everyone for helping me. This is something I never thought I could do. It wouldn't have happened if, you did, if we didn't work together. I know I was a real jerk when I first came here, but I hope you can forget all that. I know what really counts now, working together and helping each other out. Everyone gathers around Bobby, claps him on the back, and gives him high fives. Bobby's smile wins the day. Thank you for that. That's a really fun story. Well, thank you. It was super fun to write. I'm sure. So reading it just now, how did it feel knowing that so many people are going to be seeing you, the author, reading this, your baby. Well, you know, it's, it's, I think that's the job as an author is you, you, we all have an intention for our writing and we hope that it gets out in the world. And any way that we can share that is such a blessing. Definitely agreed. Thank you so much. Um, I love the story and I love the names you chose for the characters. That was fun. Is there any last thing that you want to say either about the chapter or about the story or the message of the story or the project or? Um, I think I would like everybody to watch out for book two because this um, we have another group of authors that is working on um a second volume of short stories and Amelia is going to make a comeback in that story. Ooh. So I'm excited for that. And um, Amelia has three other stories that are picture books. So it, if you want to look those up, they're on Amazon and they're also on my website. So yeah, just to let everyone know, we are going to come back in and give all of Jan's information, the book link, everything is going to be in the notes Definitely, please make sure, listeners, that you um, leave comments or ask Jan any questions that you may have. She's going to come in and, and do her best to answer everything she can on the Facebook page and um, check out the YouTube. Any last, anything, Jan? Um, I think with these stories, if they, if you can share them with kids to help make a difference in their lives, I think that would be a great benefit to the world. We've got to support our children the best we can and hopefully help them handle any difficult situations that they're facing. Beautiful. Thank you for that, Jan. All righty, listeners, thank you so much for tuning in today. Be sure to like, follow, and subscribe, and we'll catch you next time.